Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today's topic is maybe the most important one in representation theory. Well, at least uh, certainly an important one because I'm trying to explain now what representations actually are. Well, representation theory, hence name, I guess, should be about representations. So representations are really, really matrices. Well, we'll see what I mean. So matrices are pretty cool. So why are matrices cool? Because of linear algebra. So when I first, uh, well, had my first linear algebra class, I wasn't really paying attention. Um, I should have because linear algebra is really, really good. It's, it's an extremely powerful tool. Um, I dare to say here, of course, I want to promote representation theory. I dare to say here that it's the most powerful toolbox known in mathematics. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And you want to use it to study something nonlinear. And that summarizes what a representation is, actually. Maybe I start with an example makes more sense. So um, Z mod 3, basically ro rotational symmetry of order 3. And as you can see, or hopefully you can see, it acts on this Finnish roundabout sign. I think it's a Finnish roundabout sign. It uh, doesn't really matter. It acts on this object by rotation uh, by the corresponding angle, right? So, um, so how does it look like? Well, you rotate the picture and the symmetry of an object is when I rotate the picture, you can't tell the difference. Um, mathematically speaking, you can identify, if you want, symmetries with, with actions. So this Z mod 3 acts here, so this should have a threefold rotational symmetry. And of course it does, right? You, your brain immediately recognizes that this has a threefold rotational symmetry. The way to illustrate symmetries is to break the symmetry. Say it again, because symmetry is defined by you do something to a picture and I'm looking away and then I'm looking again and I can't tell the difference. So the, the symmetry is defined by you can't tell the difference. So in order to illustrate it, I usually break the symmetry. That's kind of a fun, fun fact actually. Uh, in order to illustrate symmetry, you need to break the symmetry. Anyway, so I break the symmetry by marking one of the arrows, right? So that breaks the symmetry. If one of the arrows is marked, then the whole object doesn't have any uh, three rotational forward symmetry anymore, of course. And the action here is pretty simple. So there is a unit element, which is the do nothing operation. Um, an element I call G, which is a rotation here. Um, and H, which is twice G, which rotates a little bit more. And the whole point of representation theory is that, that th th those are groups. So groups are kind of, you can define them if you want as symmetries of certain objects. Um, you can be more general, you can, use other forms of algebraic object doesn't you don't need to be groups but let's stay with groups here so groups are certainly non-linear objects there is no linear structure a priori on z mod 3 or on some other fancy group uh, but a representation right matrices are cool should be a linear object so uh, why well because linear algebra so let's try to find a representation using this picture or let's try to come up with the notion of a representation using this picture. And the way to do it is the following. So I think of a vector space, I think of a three-dimensional vector space, well, some ground field, ground field actually doesn't matter so much here. Uh, but anyway, there's some ground field I would like to think about a vector space and a three-dimensional vector space certainly has the three coordinate vectors as um, they, well, the building blocks, of course. And I kind of do a falling funny trick. Instead of writing the coordinate vectors, I just write the pictures from before. So I identify the first coordinate vector with this one and so on. Um, that sounds like a really strange way of doing it, but keep in mind that coordinate vectors, the way we denote them, so uh, as here on the slide, is also just a convention. So I just change the conventions a little bit. And instead of writing coordinate vectors, I write my pictures, why not? And in the pictures, of course, I know how the action works, right? I just, just put a, here you go. That's what we already know from before. And if you think of these as now sending vectors to vectors, you can write down the matrix for that action. In this case, G. So G sends the first vector, this is the first vector, to the second vector. So you get an entry here, it's a matrix. It sends the second vector to the third vector, so you get an entry here, right? So first, uh, second, third. Um, and it sends the third vector to the first vector, so you get an entry here. So yeah, now G actually is a matrix and not just 
well, an element of a group. It's a matrix. And the only thing I did is I kind of identified my action space with a vector space. And then I get the matrix from my uh, group. So a representation really replaces geometric objects by vectors. That's what I just did. Or vectors by geometric objects or whatever. Some analogies between vectors and geometric objects and action by actions by matrices. And now, hell yeah, everything is linear, right? There are matrices everywhere and vectors and you can apply linear algebra tricks and it's really, really good. Um, in the following sense, actually. So the point representation, you want to represent a matrix uh, sorry, you want to represent a group on matrices, a matrix on matrices. Matrix on matrices is also a representation, but we want to present here a group on matrices. And the point is the following. Everything kind of is reflected now in linear algebra. Um, so here, the multiplication table and the multiplication table of the associated matrices. You don't need to look too closely at those tables. Maybe the colors help to see that they're actually exactly the same. Um, upstairs is just the abstract one, and downstairs is kind of the concrete one using matrices. And you really just check. I just computed G for you on the previous slide. You can do the same for H. And the, the do nothing operation is just the identity matrix. And you can just check that those matrices, so down here, they just multiply exactly like the group elements do. So the whole multiplication table, which is the group basically by definition, is reflected in the representation. And that's pretty cool. So you can now just think of just any kind of questions you had a, have about your favorite group and you transfer them to linear algebra, right? That's pretty good. Of course, for Zmod 3, it might not be super exciting, but think about a really complicated group and you now transfer questions into linear algebra and you can apply your linear algebra tricks to, to try to answer them. And there are quite a few linear algebra tricks. Um, so that's the whole point. So you represent the group in terms of matrices. Formally speaking, it works as follows. You just say a representation of a group on a vector space with a chosen ground field. It's just a group homomorphism from G to the general linear group of this vector space, so automorphism versus vector space. This is just saying that um, <laughs> you associate a, a matrix to each group element. That's just what it says. A priori, it's not quite clear why those things should exist, but there's always a trivial representation. It's a uh, trivial. Um, it's a dimension. You just the vector space you choose here is just one dimensional. So it's just the ground field itself, and everything just acts by the identity matrix. Uh, that's not very exciting. That's why it's called the trivial representation. So everything acts by one. So you can't, in particular, you can't distinguish your group elements anymore. Everything is just sent to one. And of course, because one has such a boring multiplication table, the multiplication table of the group is kind of contracted in this representation to a quite a boring one. But anyway, they exist and that's already good news. And it turns out that they are really, they have really, really a lot of them. And studying them is one of the most major breakthroughs in last century's mathematics. It's representation theory. It's really, really good. Um, roughly, you should think of it as follows. And as I said, again, you can make more, you can study more fancy objects, you can study Lie groups or whatever, kind of whatever you want. And a group action would just go to odd of, of some automorphisms of some X, some set X, and a group representation, so the group action here, and a group representation would go to some um, GL over some vector space. Um, in this picture down here, sadly, this is really bad notation. GLC just means uh, the ground field is C, and you can still vary. Oh, it's a really bad picture. So this, this V is not this C, but this C rather is this K here. Anyway, so the point is you restrict to a smaller class linear representations, and now you can play linear algebra games, and you have a really satisfying theory in the end, which is a priori not quite clear, but it really is really great in the end. Okay. And this is really good. So this is really, really powerful. Here's an example. Uh, well, it's a group of order eight. So the multiplication table is already a little bit horrible, right? It's an eight by eight multiplication table. <laughs> so because the group is of order eight, it's called the quaternic group of order eight. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's some more general version of the complex numbers, if you want. Anyway, it has eight elements. And above, you see the multiplication table. Uh, it's reasonably complicated. And boo, I can't quite tell. But groups might have actually really, really efficient matrix representations, which is pretty good. So for example, my group here of order eight is 
injectively, uh, so faithfully is just the word, it just means it's injectively. So it, it really is presented without loss, right? So in the, in the trivial representation, you lose everything. In a faithful representation, you lose nothing. So without loss, you can actually uh, realize this group on a two-dimensional vector space. And I just wrote down the matrices. So we had eight matrices here. You realize a group which looks really, really complicated and you have an eight by eight multiplication table um, just by those little eight matrices, eight two by two matrices. And you can read off all properties from the group just from those eight two by two matrices. And as you can see, they don't look that bad. You basically have uh, diagonal matrices and kind of these swaps of diagonal matrices. It's not so bad, right? So you can very often actually very efficiently represent your group on small spaces and well, doing linear algebra over a four dimensional space or whatever it is in the end is not so super hard. And that's the whole point. So a nonlinear object is now presented as a linear object. Okay, so representation theory, as I just said, basically is this idea of representing a nonlinear object, may it be a group or an algebra, a Lie group, whatever you want, basically, on some linear space. So you associate to each group element a matrix, and then you can play your linear algebra games uh, to understand the group. And this is pretty cool. And this is really, really one of the major um, breakthroughs and one of the major fields of last century's mathematics, and it's still very much in construction. Right? It's not old, it's still very much in construction, but it ha has been proven to be really, really powerful. And it's extremely smooth and beautiful. And that's kind of the part of this video series. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.